Phil Spencer of Xbox speaks to Polygon and the community is furious over what's said in the interview. Join us for Phil Spencer angers Xbox community over brand pivot. This is the medicine. Let's get into this one. Yeah. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It's your boy, MM2K of Geeks, Hard Knock Digital Culture, Cloud Dosage, MM2K Gaming, you name it, I am there. Back again with another episode of The Medicine. Before we get into this one, do us a huge favor. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when we're dropping these doses. And, and look, look, when you hit that notification bell, hit the drop down list next to the notification bell. Make sure that it says all, not personalized, because personalized means that YouTube's goofy algorithm gets to pick and choose which videos that you get to see. Uh, it's unbelievable, but do yourself a huge favor, put the power back in your hands and select all. With no further ado, let's get into today's video. It's a great one. It's called Phil Spencer angers Xbox community over quote unquote brand pivot. So story goes as this folks, Xbox's Phil Spencer just shook up the community with his recent Polygon interview. In it, he says that layoffs at Activision was necessary as Xbox is a business that has to be profitable. He also states that the console market is not growing and that Xbox's brand pivot to games on more platforms is the path to growth. He continues that, you know, to make reference to wanting to put PC stores like Epic and Steam on the new Xbox and he suggests that this huge brand pivot again, they had to come to this conclusion. He, bl he blames Gen Z for this huge pivot in the strategy, and it, which happens to completely defy their approach just a few short years ago when it seems like that they did want to compete, um, you know what I'm saying, in, in the con AAA genre defining market. All right, so this is where this is the part of the video where I start to rant <laughs> and, and give you my analysis of what I think is going wrong here. First and foremost, let's talk about medium confusion. All right, so I think Microsoft inadvertently is erroneously looking at its strategy with its other products and services and in trying to imply, apply the exact same strategy to games, which is a fool's errand. Why do I say that? Because Microsoft's strategy is based upon A, deliver, delivery on the cloud, which I, look, for all disclosure and transparency, I am a cloud gamer. I love NVIDIA GeForce Now. It's my favorite way to play. Um, and I do feel like that cloud is the future, okay? The future just isn't now. Doesn't mean that you shouldn't cater to the cloud gaming community. I love what GeForce Now and other platforms are doing. Um, you gotta cultivate that community, continue to invest and continue to grow uh, with that type of gaming. With that said, I understand what, how mainstream gamers think. Um, there are certain elements of cloud gaming to where they still gotta build and make inroads so they can appeal more to mainstream gamers. That's gonna take some time. Okay, so I'm not, even though I'm a cloud gamer myself, I'm not disillusioned in the belief that the entire gaming community is going to want to game like me. All right. That being said, Microsoft is delusion, I feel. They're looking at gaming the same way that you look at music or, or movies and, and, and TV shows, right? And that's wrong. Why? First and foremost, and we've talked about this here before. When it comes to cloud gaming, all right, when it comes to streaming music and movies and TVs, degradations in the output are not a problem there. Why? Because the convenience is all more what's important. Because I want to binge, I want access, I want to see a lot of TV, I want to listen to a lot of music. I, I need to listen to, I need to binge on this stuff. So even if it doesn't sound as clear as my home stereo, whatever, it can sound good enough. And then, te you know, technology and hardware and stuff like that has made, you know, cloud or streaming music sound very good, right? But even at first it started to boom without it sounding comparable to its native counterparts. And that was okay because the convenience was number one. 
When it comes to gaming, there is not that need to binge, for one, because gaming is dynamic, unlike movies, TVs, and even music in, in instances. When I play a game, I can play the same game over and over and over again. But every time I boot up that game, every time I boot up Fortnite or Call of Duty, I get a different experience. I can play the same level. Maybe the first time I booted it up, I, I, I got killed the first try. The second time I made it halfway through. The final time I, I actually won the, the Battle Royale match. It's different, it's dynamic, it's not static, it's different every single time I boot it up. Music, TV, and uh, movies are different. Once I watch season four of um, Stranger Things, I've seen it all. I may like it enough to where I may watch it over and over again, but that's not atypical. I've seen the season, I'm moving on, I'm waiting for the next season, okay? So because of that bingeable nature that's there with TV and movies and not so much with gaming, accessibility is not the biggest thing for the average gamer. There's still that output. And then you gotta take into consideration, look, if output could be compromised and if output and performance wasn't such a big thing, why do we buy new consoles? Why, why are we putting up $500 for this thing to just play games every few years, right? Because games get bigger, they get prettier, there's more things that you can do in, with them, and people want more, they expect more. They expect the output to evolve. So when it comes to games, it's not so much about accessibility as it is the ambiance and you being engrossed in the experience the best way that you can, all right? So that's why the delivery system and streaming games isn't an automatic A plus when it comes to cloud gaming. It, it's gonna take time and that's okay, that's fine. If, if we stay steadfast on this and we continue to invest in it, then that gap between what cloud gaming gives you versus what dedicated device gaming gets you will shrink and cloud gaming at some point in time will give you more, but it's gonna take time, okay? Opposed to where when it comes to TV and music, it's just a non-brainer, instantaneous success, right? All right, that being said, there's also another problem in the way Microsoft looks at gaming versus how it looks at other mediums and, and how they're contorting the two. When it comes, look, okay, there's two types of mediums. There's like premium medium, and then there's what we call mid lane medium. What, what am I talking about? Well, when it comes to games, Premium medium is the, the gaming that you do on consoles, on your PC, and all that stuff, right? That's premium mediums. Um, and then mid lane me game, uh, medium in gaming is like, you know, you're gaming on your phone, your candy crushes and stuff like that, and even the big Monopoly game that's, you know, doing well. The stuff that you can do on the go that's like the guilty pleasure boom 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 not real not a lot involved but it just has a, a fun play loop that you can do on a mid lane and in a, in a, you can enjoy in a mid lane way all right the same kind of though applies to tv and movies but what microsoft is doing erroneously is that they're only paying attention to the growth in mid lane gaming they're looking at mid lane gaming and they're like, look, Gen Z is doing more and more mid lane gaming. And premium gaming that we do on consoles is dying. Th that's their analysis. It's gonna die because Gen Z does a lot of mid, you know, mid lane gaming. That's not true because Gen Z is all for gaming on the PlayStation and beefing up their PCs like anybody else. They just happen to do more uh, mid lane gaming as well. Okay, it's kind of like going to the movies, Dune 2 releases. I got to see that in IMAX versus me watching a comedian, Ha Ha Davis or anybody on there. I ain't got to go to IMAX to watch him. I can just watch him on YouTube or TikTok, right? But I don't want to see, watch all of Dune 2 on TikTok. You know what I'm saying? Like I got to go to IMAX to see that. There are different mediums, premium and mid lane, that that talk to the consumer in different ways and how they want to experience them. 
So Microsoft is making a serious food paw and only paying attention to the fact that Gen Z does a lot more mid lane gaming than previous generations. They still do a lot of consumer gaming. And to back this up, I want to show you something. This is from someone by the name of Nib. He goes by at Nib95 on Twitter, uh, at Nib95 underscore on Twitter. Definitely check him out. I love the analysis that he does. Um, and he says, look here, the console gaming market has actually grown faster than the PC market, which is something that Microsoft toots that they want to invest more in versus console because console is flat and dead, right? Um, and in terms over the past six years, he says, per data analysis firm Nuzu, growth, and he shows the growth from 2017, ver, uh, you know, versus now, right? So yeah, the amount of users may have gone flat, but the growth in revenue and, and stuff like that, it continues to soar. So this belief system that console gaming is dead and, and really not going to be lucrative is a farce. There is nothing showing that. In totality there is a growth in mid lane gaming definitely and mid lane gaming is definitely something that you want to invest in and be a part of but i'm looking at playstation and looking at nintendo looking at playstation in particular making more money in gaming than microsoft even after they bought abk and i'm like premium gaming is doing quite well all right so with that said here's my here's my thoughts on the market not growing Again, PlayStation, Nintendo doing just fine, and they're investing in the future with Gen Z gaming like Microsoft. It sounds like to me that instead of showing some ominous immediate future for console gaming, it sounds like to me what Xbox is doing is they're just making excuses for their failures. Okay. Uh, here's my conclusion. Xbox wanted to compete, but they just don't know how with the, the current personnel. Satya doesn't know enough about the culture to see this. All he knows is, hey, when I took over this thing, Xbox was in the red deeply. And with Phil Spencer, we've, we're now in the black. We're now making money. They just quite can't get past what Sony's making. They can't compete with Sony. So now they got to figure out something else. You know what I mean? What does this mean for gamers? Well, what it means for them is that while Xbox tries to throw things at the wall to expand their revenue now and see what sticks, it's easy for you to get caught up in the headwinds of the things that they say they want to try, the things that are in flight, okay? But if history, if we don't want to repeat the mistakes of history, then we got to understand that paying attention to what Microsoft says versus what they do is a fool's errand. Look, I, I simply don't recommend making long-term investments based upon Xbox's desires. Invest now in what you enjoy from Xbox. Like, hey, look, I'm a Game Pass subscriber myself. I enjoy the service. It has a, it has a, a place in my gaming portfolio. But don't set expectations beyond that with them. Simply buy into them for what you're liking, what they're doing now. And I say that because I know long-term gamers who made the fool's errand and buying an Xbox Series X, not really having anything to play and not really enjoying the box or not really having a reason to buy it and admitting that to me in personal conversation. And I asked them, well, why did you buy? And they said, well, it's because of the things that I think that they're going to do this generation. They are the people that are upset right now because they bought into all of the, the, the smoke and mirrors that they were told for them to fall flat. But if they were paying attention, they would realize that this is a trend with the current regime at Xbox. Here's what I suggest that you do do. Plan accordingly long-term with proven entities, right? And if you don't want to take it from me, believe someone who is a serious Xbox enthusiast who's always writing and always trying to be optimistic on these things that are that Xbox desires to do. But even they recognize the uh, the issues that they're running through now with gaming. Um, this is a tweet that I have from someone by the name of Derek Strickland from Tweet Town. And in it, Derek says something very profound. He says, 
I think Xbox is trying to play 4D chess and strategize towards the future. I feel that this might be happening too much and Xbox is looking a bit too far into the future with some things. It feels like Xbox is trying to shift too often in a bid to anticipate more profitability. I think no true words have been spoken. So if you don't want to listen to me, listen to Derek Strickland of Tweak Town. With that said, that's it from your boy. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. Cause like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. They will lead you again to geeks, hard knock digital culture, cloud dosage, and MM2K gaming. With that said, peace. Have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day.